is here. Now, broadcasting from the underground command post, deep in the bowels of a hidden bunker, somewhere under the brick and steel of a nondescript building, we've once again made contact with our leader, Mark Levin. Mark Levin here, our number, 877-381-3811. Hello, 877-381-3811. Well, as you know by now, of course, if you listen to this program, the federal district judge in Wilmington, Delaware, among other things, specifically asked the government, what ongoing investigation You're giving him immunity, Hunter Biden, from everything for everything, despite the fact that he's only pleading to a tax case and a gun case. Then, of course, all hell broke loose on that that and other matters. And then we have legal analysts out there who've all hopped on this, and they've all said, I told you this would be the big issue. Actually, they didn't. This is one of the issues of many issues that we discussed here that he might be liable for. Big issue, small issue, or no issue. But I want to take it a step further. Here's uh, Jonathan Turley, very smart guy. Real clear politics, scribing what he, he said to Julian Turner on Fox. During the course of this, she said, I think the crucial question, at least in a lot of people's minds, is whether what these unusual proceedings corroborate or at least substantiate the claims from critics over the last few weeks that this plea deal was a sweetheart deal, excuse me, to begin with. Now, God knows we've talked about it here. We've talked about it on TV. We've talked about it everywhere. Jonathan Turley. I think it does support that view. The problem with the plea agreement is you can't actually type in wink and nod, right? I mean, the problem with this agreement is that the judge read it and said, what is this? And part of the obligation of the court is to make sure that the defendant and the government are very clear on what the agreement means. And they weren't. And it broke down with the most basic questions. That was, what was so surprising here is that these are the types of questions as a defense counsel you work out with prosecutors in advance. Let me stop here. These judges are not monks. They're watching the news. They're listening to radio. They know that there's a lot of questions about this deal that simply don't add up. You knew there were a lot of questions about this deal that don't add up. He says she basically asked one question and the whole darn thing fell apart. And so the question now is, where do you go from here? It's like a wedding where both the bride and the groom objected and everyone else is sitting there saying, wait. How did we get here, and where do we go from here? Turner, I know, you know, you don't know, right, why? Just reading what it says. But why did they end up here? Why did they get to this point in this courtroom today where they didn't agree on what they actually agreed on? Turley, I think part of the problem is they really did want to cap out the cases. No, let me tell you why. And then I'll continue. I said it last night. Because the government's getting everything it wants from the district courts in Washington, D.C. 
because almost every one of those judges come out of Maine justice. They know each other. They know the prosecutors. They know the assistant attorneys general. They know all these people. Plus, many of the cases are going before these radical Democrats appointed by Obama and Clinton to the court. And so my point to you last night, and I'll repeat it today, is the federal judges that are not in Washington, who are not from Maine Justice, they're far more skeptical about the Department of Justice, Maine Justice, Federal Bureau of Investigation, and the Special Counsel in the case of the Trump attacks. That's why. This judge never worked at Maine Justice, and she's a judge in Wilmington, Delaware. Charlie, I think part of the problem is they really did want to cap out the case, which is true. The Department of Justice wanted to cap this investigation, but they didn't want to say that it was now over. And from the beginning, the Hunter Biden team said this is a closeout plea agreement. There would be nothing left to investigate. But the department is telling Congress we're not going to give you their, these witnesses or these documents because there's an ongoing investigation. We talked about that. That didn't make any sense. He gets immunity from everything else, but at the same time, they, they're saying that uh, the case is over. You can't do both things when a judge is asking you to specifically address whether this is a closeout or a continuing investigation. That's the truth. But I think in the Washington, D.C. courtrooms, they expected a rubber stamp, and they expected one from this judge. Because that's what they've been getting in all the Trump cases. That's what they've been getting in all the, on the challenges. But it's not the D.C. courthouse. It's the Wilmington, Delaware courthouse. Or it's the Fort Pierce, Florida courthouse. Curley says, this is a big problem. This was all supposed, was all supposed to be scripted. True. It's all supposed to be easy. This is why to have, <coughs> excuse me, cholera, a judge with integrity. Who's really going to look at the law, really going to try and look at what's taking place, makes all the difference in the world. All the difference in the world. That's the lesson from this. That we count on a judiciary that is truly filled with people of virtue. That's what we count on to be a check on the prosecutors and a check on the Department of Justice. We haven't had that up till now. Turley goes on. And if he, here we go. Because the judge has raised the one charge that the White House most fears, which is the chance that Hunter Biden was a foreign agent. If he was a foreign agent, the question is, foreign agent for who? And for what purpose? The president was that purpose. If you're influence peddling, peddling, it's influence over the president. So if you go for FARA, it's going to bring all this stuff in, including some of these tax accounts for 2014 and 2015 that the Department of Justice allowed to run, allowed the statute of limitations to expire. All of that can get bootstrapped into a FARA issue. The whole purpose of this deal is collapsing as we're watching it, and it's taken Washington by utter surprise. I was on the Hill talking with the members and everyone was floored. Okay. Which is why the Department of Justice, when it goes back to this court, I think it's 30 days or 60 days, it's going to do everything it can to work out another deal with Hunter Biden that may well include FARA. Okay, you violated FARA. Maybe you'll do a few months, or maybe you'll do a fine, or maybe we'll do something. But what's the real exposure here? The Department of Justice is not going to indict Joe Biden because it's long-standing department policy under Republican and Democrat attorneys general that you cannot indict a sitting president. You can't even force a sitting president to testify in a criminal trial. You can force a sitting president to testify in a civil trial if he's the subject of a civil lawsuit. The Supreme Court has settled on that. But you cannot force the president to testify in a criminal trial. Unless, of course, he's killed somebody on the street. 
which case that raises even more complex issues. But we needn't go there because that's not what happened. Let me tell you what the big issue is here. Because this Department of Justice, under no circumstances, is going to be able to, even if it could, drag the President of the United States into a courtroom. Does it sound like Attorney General Garland's willing to do that? Have you seen any evidence of that whatsoever? He won't appoint a special counsel in this case in order to prevent the door from being thrown wide open. Joe Biden is a co-conspirator in the violation of Farah by his son on multiple occasions his son flew on a jet Air Force Two with him and that was done to help facilitate his business transactions with foreign governments and front corporations the multiple times it is said that Joe Biden was sitting with his son when he was making threats to officials and others in foreign lands for shakedowns. Joe Biden was helping to facilitate to facilitate Hunter Biden's activities. Congress already has all this information. That is These committees have done a hell of a job. They've already pulled the teeth. So they don't have to show that Joe Biden received a nickel, Mr. Producer. Not a nickel. We know that Hunter Biden received millions of nickels. Tens of millions of dollars. They also have Information from witnesses, like Bob Alinsky, among others. We're going to hear from Devin Archer on Monday. They also have schedule information on how often Joe Biden met with Hunter Biden's business partners and others. The case against Joe Biden as a co-conspirator assisting his son to violate the FARA is overwhelming. But Mark, you just said they're not going to charge him. That it's a, That's correct. It should be the absolute first article in the list of articles of impeachment against Joe Biden because it is compelling. It is bulletproof. There is no speculation. You don't need evidence that Joe Biden took a nickel. He's a co-conspirator for his son, who took tens of millions. Now, by the way, if they investigate and find more, that's perfectly fine by me. Don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. But they have Joe Biden dead to rights for impeachment. Right now, as I speak. Dead to rights. I'll be right back. Mark Lovin. If we've learned anything over the past two years, it's that unexpected things can happen. For example... Average IRA and 401k balances fell 20% last year, according to Fidelity. We didn't expect that. But here's something that could help if you have an IRA or 401k. Physical gold in your IRA. The World Gold Council says even central banks are buying tons of gold. Now what does that tell you? Learn why many Americans are turning to a gold IRA with Augusta Precious Metals. They're the best. I recommend them to my friends and family. You should call Augusta and get their ultimate guide to gold IRAs. Feels good to know there's another savings option. Diversity is the key. Call Augusta Precious Metals at 8774-GOLD-IRA. That's 8774-GOLD-IRA. 8774-GOLD-IRA. Consult your financial professionals before making investment decisions 
and get disclosures at AugustaPreciousMetals.com. going to have Netanyahu on Sunday so he can actually have a truly fair and balanced interview by me. Um, he's always under attack by the Israeli media because the Israeli media is heavily Marxist and leftist. But same with the American media, the New York Times, Washington Post, and even some in our little circle of quasi-conservative uh, hosts and so forth. And so uh, I will give him that opportunity. The charges against him in Israel are all bogus. Even a judge there suggested the prosecution drop them, but so powerful uh, are these prosecutors and so forth in Israel that uh, they said they're not. Isn't it interesting that the effort here by the Democrat Party is to put Trump in prison and the effort in Israel uh, by the leftist party coalitions over there is to put Netanyahu in prison. And this coup effort was hatched three years ago by Ehud Belach, the, uh, the little midget who was once prime minister and a complete failure. That's right. Anyway, so ladies and gentlemen, what I'm saying is <clears throat> some great legal experts are focused on what the Department of Justice will do now. I am saying as of right now, this minute, as I'm speaking to you, Joe Biden is a co-conspirator in Hunter Biden's violations of the FARA. The judge was wise. She said, what about FARA, which has led to all this commentary and legal analysis? I am telling you, the Department of Justice, the position is you can't not indict a sitting president. And I happen to think that's one of the reasons Biden is running, because he doesn't want to be indicted by a Republican Department of Justice. And they're not going to pursue Joe Biden, period. They haven't pursued him yet. They won't even appoint a special counsel. That's why they're also going after Trump. They're not going to do it. They'll do something with Hunter. They have to. They have no choice. The judges put a gun to their head. Could be some other deal. That's, how, that's what I suspect. But look, I'm not Nostradamus. What I am saying is the evidence, evidence, evidence that Joe Biden greased the skids for his son. The flights on Air Force Two, what were they, just tourist visits? We know that business deals came for, out of those flights. The phone calls, the witness testimony, when you're doing an impeachment inquiry, you're not doing a criminal inquiry. You don't have the tools to do a criminal inquiry, and that it would be a separation of powers issue anyway. So when you hear the left say, where's the evidence? Where's the evidence? Ignore them. They're a bunch of stupid bastards, and they mean to be. But tonight... Joe Biden is guilty for impeachment purposes of being a co-conspirator to far violations by his son. Tonight! Tonight! As I speak to you. I'll be right back. If we've learned anything over the past two years, it's that unexpected things can happen. For example... Average IRA and 401k balances fell 20% last year, according to Fidelity. We didn't expect that. But here's something that could help if you have an IRA or 401k. Physical gold in your IRA. The World Gold Council says even central banks are buying tons of gold. Now what does that tell you? Learn why many Americans are turning to a gold IRA with Augusta Precious Metals. They're the best. I recommend them to my friends and family. You should call Augusta and get their ultimate guide to gold IRAs. Feels good to know there's another savings option. Diversity is the key. Call Augusta Precious Metals at 8774-GOLD-IRA. That's 8774-GOLD-IRA. 8774-GOLD-IRA. Consult your financial professionals before making investment decisions and get disclosures at AugustaPreciousMetals.com. Nobody says it better than Mark Levin. I'll go with what Mark Levin said, because nobody could say it better. Call in now at 877-381-3811. By the way, we may have time for this later. We'll see. But 
Notice all the focus of the media is on the Florida curriculum, Mr. Producer. Because Ron DeSantis is standing up to all the perverts and the kooks. Night after night, day after day, it's the Florida curriculum. What about the New York curriculum? Or the California curriculum? Or the Illinois curriculum? Or the Massachusetts curriculum? All of which is sick. Remember this issue about slavery? You had this scholar, not DeSantis, this scholar who, who talked about uh, the, the slaves, how horrific it all was, but some of them, as individual human beings, were able to learn skills while they were under the most horrendous conditions. So when they were freed, uh, they could subsist to some extent. Nobody's excusing slavery. I don't believe anybody's even saying slavery is a good thing. Wouldn't that be weird? These are two black scholars. They could speak for themselves. William Allen is one of them from Michigan State University. He's an elderly black man, but a very well-known scholar, and I guess he's a uh, pro-slavery racist. I don't know. But here, I want you to hear this from Right Scoop. This is where I saw it. Kamala Harris is going to be really upset when she finds out about this. Finds out about what? She made an emergency trip to Florida just to bash the state's curriculum that teaches children that slaves acquired skills. Despite their slavery, that benefited them once they were free. Well, she's going to be really angry when she finds out that the Associated Press, African, excuse me, not the Associated Press, the Advanced Program of African American Studies course, that they all wanted Florida to adopt, has the same teaching in it. What? Oh, yeah. Has the same teaching in it. Here's what it says in part. In addition to agricultural work, enslaved people learned specialized trades and worked as painters, carpenters, tailors, musicians, and healers in the North and South. Once free American, free American, Americans used these skills to provide for themselves and others. This is the AP College Board recommended coursework that every state has been adopting that the NAACP, Al Sharpton, Kamala Harris, and the others got behind and insisted and insisted that Florida adopt and that DeSantis adopt. And he said no, as to other aspects of it. So let me read from it again, thanks to Matt Walking. In addition to agricultural work, This is the uh, AP African American Studies, not Florida. Enslaved people learned specialized trades and worked as painters, carpenters, tailors, musicians, and healers in the North and South. Once free, that is free Americans, they used these skills to provide for themselves and others. Now what are we to make of this, Mr. Producer? What are we to make of this, America? Hmm. Very strange. Now, we'll see if the same people who are attacking DeSantis will now apologize. Well, they won't. They'll attack the AP College Board recommended studies. And the AP College Board is a radical left operation these days. And they said almost exactly the same thing. What do you make of that, Mr. Producer? And they're still talking about, oh, the Florida curriculum, the Florida curriculum. Because it's a hit on DeSantis. Anything. I mean, I remember a few years ago when DeSantis was going so counter. Basically, really, both administrations when it came to the vaccine, when it came to the science. He said, I have my own scientists. I have my own brain. I look at this stuff. And he opened his economy, he kept the schools open, he took the masks off the kids, he saved the vaccines for the most vulnerable, the elderly, and so forth. The beaches were open. Remember all the attacks he took? Now people act like it never happened. We get people running, I want to talk about the future, not the past, because they don't have a past. We've tried to get Vivek on now, and they keep sending us new days and times. Finally, I said, forget it. You're all over the place, Mr. Producer, you're everywhere. But for some reason, you're having a tough time figuring out when to talk to me. 
And I'm not against the guy. Not hostile at all. Weird, isn't it, Mr. Producer? He's been here once before, I believe. They asked to come on. We said yes. We gave a day. They wanted another day. We gave another day. Fine. They gave us times. We took the times. Then they said, oh, no, we need another times. Give them another time. Then today they say, well, can we make it work? I, I said, that's enough. That's enough. You don't have to come on. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Don't worry about it. You don't want to talk to 14 and a half million conservatives. You don't have it. It's okay. All right, back to this. So although the special counsel in Washington with his favorite judges has not pulled the trigger on January 6th today, the reporting is that Carlos de Oliveira, mar largos head of maintenance, is awaiting indictment on three or four counts in Florida. That they're adding a few more counts to the indictments on the document case against Trump in Florida. And maybe with his co-defendant, too. The other guy. His confidant. And, of course, we don't have the details, but it talks about fiddling around with the videotape there, the security tape. Isn't it funny? This is the way these guys work. So it's no longer really about national security. There is no allegation that Trump gave national security to anybody or it was exposed to anybody. None. They have none of that. So now we're talking about video cameras. Video cameras. So all three guys apparently are going to be one guy newly indicted, a maintenance guy. Maintenance guy. What do you think about this, America? You think this is fair? Think this is right? Well, Joe Biden... The most crooked man to ever be in the Oval Office sits there. And by the way, this guy, Ken Buck from, from uh, Colorado, we endorsed him as part of the Tea Party movement. I did for the Senate. Remember that, Mr. Producer? He almost won that seat. I think it was 2010, give or take. Endorsed him for the House. He's been on the program in the distant past. He praised Christopher Ray after Christopher Ray's cover-up testimony and was a disgrace. In the last 24 hours, he said that uh, Kevin McCarthy's distracting us with this stuff because really, you know, people aren't paying attention to the budget and spending. What does one have to do with the other? They both threaten the survival of this republic. So this talk about impeachment, you see, is a distraction. That sounds like a liberal, a left... A, a, so I have to wash my hands of this guy. I don't know what the hell happened to him, and I don't much care. This is where you separate the men from the boys and the women from the girls. When your back is up against it, when we're taking on the most corrupt regime in American history, when they're abusing their powers at the Department of Justice, and yes, Ken Buck, that includes especially the FBI and under Christopher Ray. Then, uh, then you don't get it. You don't get that these battles are on multiple fronts, including the budget front, but they're on multiple fronts. And to say, we're going to give up on the Constitution. We're going to give up on addressing the corruption. We're going to give up on the Democrat Party taking over federal law enforcement. We're going to give up on all that because it's a distraction. That is just reprehensible to me. Reprehensible. Just the way it is. So we've done more in 40 minutes than anybody does in three hours on a show. How many more, how many more stories are there going to be on DeSantis in Florida and the uh, African American Studies course when now we know that provision that they took out of context, that they spun and twisted, just like they did that bill where they, they wanted to desexualize elementary schools. Oh, it's anti-gay. It had nothing to do with gay or anything else. Doesn't matter. Or they're trying to ban books. Yeah, taking pornography out of elementary school libraries. Oh, they're banning books, America. While they're conducting the biggest censorship scheme in the history of the United States. We're the ones banning books. Well, some books need to be banned. We don't want pornography. We don't want pornography and perversion and all kinds of sick crap exposed to our children when they're seven years old. They don't care. 
Maybe that's why not a single Democrat congressman appeared at the Sound of Freedom movie that I saw the other night. They don't care. That's why they don't care if the border's open. With 85,000 missing children. Oh, but Trump kept them in cages. 85,000 missing children. They don't care. They don't care. Oh, and I love today when they say, the American people are not interested in Hunter Biden. They're not interested in these narratives about Joe. Where's the evidence? Where's the evidence? You impeached Donald Trump on nothing. No, no, where's the evidence? I don't know. If the evidence smacked you in your face, you wouldn't even feel it. You are, after all, Marxist, so you don't care. But now we're diverting the attention of the American people. They spend four years smearing Trump. Four years with lies about Russia collusion. Two and a half of those four years with the Mueller investigation. Two phony impeachments, day in and day out, night after night. A phony whistleblower, on and on and on. Leaks and leaks from the FBI and the Department of Justice. Ken Buck's buddies. Oh, yeah. And now all of a sudden, the American people don't want to hear all this, Mr. Producer. What are we going to do? And then one idiot said, they care about abortion, gun control. Oh, you Republicans, you need to run on abortion and gun control. That's all. That's that's, that's it. That'll fix it all. I'll be right back. Mark Lovin. If we've learned anything over the past two years, it's that unexpected things can happen. For example, average IRA and 401k balances fell 20% last year, according to Fidelity. We didn't expect that. But here's something that could help if you have an IRA or 401k. Physical gold in your IRA. The World Gold Council says even central banks are buying tons of gold. Now, what does that tell you? Learn why many Americans are turning to a gold IRA with Augusta Precious Metals. They're the best. I recommend them to my friends and family. You should call Augusta and get their ultimate guide to gold IRAs. Feels good to know there's another savings option. Diversity is the key. Call Augusta Precious Metals at 8774-GOLD-IRA. That's 8774-GOLD-IRA. 8774-GOLD-IRA. Consult your financial professionals before making investment decisions and get disclosures at AugustaPreciousMetals.com. You know, in 250-so years, no former president has ever been indicted, not even on one count. Not even on one count. Now, Democrats and their hack prosecutors have thrown open the door. They've thrown open the door. Every imaginable so-called crime, I'm typing it as I, as I say, that can be thought of is being used to, uh, to bring charges. It's really, uh, you know, this is the stuff that really pushed me over the edge, that caused me the right to book. I'm just being honest with you, that the Democrat Party hates America. This is what did it. Their lawlessness, their undermining of separation of powers, of the Supreme Court, of the Electoral College, of the filibuster rule in the Senate, the effort to bring in four more Democrat senators, going after state legislatures, the way they conducted the last election, I said, that's enough. Somebody has to pull all this stuff together, going from their history to mid-history to present day to future. I'll do it. It's an enormous undertaking. It is an enormous undertaking. But I pulled it off. No brag, just fact, in spectacular fashion. And I wish this book could come out today. <clears throat> it can't come out till September 19th because of printing. It just takes time. But I really wish it would. And you'd see exactly what I'm talking about. 
So I hope you'll jump to Amazon. Pre-order your copies. You'll see what I mean when it comes out. We will use this as our guidepost. And we will go through it together. If you don't like reading books, there's an audio. I'm going to be recording some of it. It's just too long for me, you can tell from my breathing and coughing, to do the whole book. But I will do the first chapter, and that first chapter of this book is very long. And extremely intriguing and compelling. So when I write a book, I'm not, how many chapters are there going to be? People ask, how do I know? I haven't written it yet. How long will the chapters be? Which I've always thought is a dumb question. It'll be as long as it needs to be. That's how long it's going to be. And so this book has hundreds of endnotes for you to check out. It's got an enormous amount of important history and philosophy, ideology, It's got a tremendous amount of connecting events. I mean, how did the Democrat Party go from an anti-black party, exclusively anti-black, and now the Republican Party is said to be the anti-black party? It's not a simple answer. It's not a matter of guessing and just throwing out a thought. It's a matter of figuring it out. And I figured it out. And this is why it takes me a while to write these things. And I explain it. The Democrat Party, which I also explain and have here, and you'll not hear it anywhere else, has really moved as being a party supposedly of civil rights, when really it's a party of civil wrongs. But I guess what I'm saying, how did this civil rights movement move from a party of equality and justice to a party of Marxism. And I explain in the book that's exactly what's happened to the so-called civil rights movement. It's come from a party that demands, properly so, the equal treatment of human beings regardless of their color to a party that insists on resegregation, Marxism, centralized power. That's now the civil rights movement of today. And I explain all that. Lots more. It's never boring here. I'll be right back. This segment of the podcast is exclusively sponsored by Pure Talk. Pure Talk offers great coverage and can save your family money on your wireless bill every single month. Go to puretalk.com to find the plan that's right for you. Thank you again for listening, and thank you so much for this sponsorship, Pure Talk. He's here. He's here. Now, broadcasting from from the underground command post, deep in the bowels of a hidden bunker, somewhere under the brick and steel of a nondescript building, we've once again made contact with our leader, Mark Levin. Hello, America. Mark Levin here. Our number, 877-381-3811. 877-381-3811. Ryan Nobles, nobody knows who that idiot is, but he's NBC News Capitol Hill correspondent. You wouldn't know it. He sounds like a Democrat, of course. Covering this Hunter Biden stuff. Here's what he has to say, and I'm using him as the foil that he is. Cut three, go. Republicans were already insistent that they were going to continue to investigate Biden's foreign business dealings. Now, federal prosecutors in that hearing yesterday saying that their investigation continues. Now, it is important to keep in mind while Republicans believe that there is a tie between Hunter Biden's business dealings and the president himself, they have yet to provide any hard evidence that the president himself has done anything wrong. Got that? That's why I'm saying bypass all this crap. Fact is, he's a co-conspirator in support of his son's uh, grifting. That is, his violations of FARA. That is not in dispute. There's no evidence, you see. There's no evidence that they have to provide hard evidence the president himself has done anything wrong. 
Mm-hmm. Well, being a co-conspirator to the violations of FARA is wrong. To expect this Department of Justice to do anything about it is laughable. So, it's an article on the impeachment process, certainly during the inquiry, in my view. Now, all over TV and radio, people can keep wringing their hands, wringing their hands. That's okay, I wring my hands too, but at some point, they're raw. And so you need to come up with ideas. Not fanciful ideas, real ideas. Real ideas. And my hat tip to Kevin McCarthy wants to have an impeachment inquiry, despite what Ken Buck has to say. And during the impeachment inquiry, you can gather evidence about Joe Biden's role in helping his son get money. See, the genius of this is you don't have to demonstrate that Joe Biden got a penny, even though we all know he's a crook. But I'm saying... Congress doesn't have the investigative tools that the criminal prosecutors do. do. So we got we got to come to reality. So what can we do? I've told you what we can do. Now I'm hoping the backpenchers pick up on it. I don't expect them to point to us. That's okay, but at least at least regurgitate it. At least plagiarize it. <clears throat> You don't have to prove that Joe Biden took a nickel. The fact that he was at any meeting when his son was shaking down the communist Chinese or the Romanians. The fact. The fact that he got the prosecutor fired in Ukraine. The fact that his son was on multiple plane trips with him when he was vice president. And the other facts that have in fact been demonstrated, Ryan Nobles, NBC News Capitol Hill correspondent, is more than enough evidence. It's overwhelming evidence that Joe Biden assisted his son in getting payments from foreign governments and foreign government front corporations for which he offered services, didn't really provide anything, didn't really do anything for it, but he said that there were things he could do. His last name is Biden. It's all right there, ladies and gentlemen. Go back to the New York Post articles. Go back to the Wall Street Journal editorials. Go to the Washington Examiner. Go to the Washington Times. Multiple shows on TV and radio. Dig into the evidence yourself on the internet. Now, one of these legal analysts, America, has criticized these judges. Not one. Because that's not how lawyers are trained. Particularly lawyers that now have clients that go in front of judges in Washington, D.C. I'm not talking about those who don't, but those who do. They're not going to say it's because the judges in Washington, D.C., all, the vast majority, come out of Maine justice. It's really an incestuous relationship. Many of them were prosecutors. Now they're former federal prosecutors passing judgment on prosecutors. Okay, that's fine. But there's this incestuous relationship. Many of them know people who know people. They socialize with each other. And there you have it. Not so in Wilmington, Delaware, or Fort Pierce, Florida, or in the case of the censorship case in Louisiana, you got to get these cases out of Washington, D.C. Now, that doesn't mean it's perfect. You have a couple of knuckleheads, obviously, out in these other places, too. But what I'm saying is, The reason the DOJ and the Biden lawyers cut this deal, even though in broad daylight we talked about it, everybody talked about it, you don't have to be a lawyer to understand it, that it was a corrupt deal, a cozy deal between the Biden DOJ and the Biden defense lawyers. We all knew it. We talked about it. Everybody talked about it. But the difference here is they figured it would be rubber stamped if it got in front of a Judge Beryl Howell, who has since retired. 
or that creepy Obama judge. What's her name? Jackson, whoever, whatever her name is. Or any of the rest of them. Or even some of the Republican judges who have been all, well, sucked into the vortex. Very, very disappointing. Not one damn one of them has stood up. Not one of them. Even the ones I know. Shame on them. They have to live with it. There's nothing I can do about it. But still this evening, nobody's mentioned this. It's really quite remarkable. Hillary Clinton destroys thousands and thousands of emails. She's not even an ex-president. She's an ex-secretary of state. She was never charged with obstruction, even though those emails had been subpoenaed by the House Oversight Committee. Jason Chaffetz has talked about this with us. And yet now, Mr. Rogue Prosecutor is apparently throwing three or four more charges on top of... So we'll have 40 charges against Trump. And again, what, I, what I've told you before is the goal here is to just get him on one count. What happens is the jurors, they go in in the back, they, they want to they completely disapprosecute. Sometimes they're, they're, they're courageous enough to do it, but they'll, they'll start negotiating. Well, we got 40 counts here. How about these three? Let's at least do these three. All right, all right. We'll drop the 37. We'll take the three. Or we'll drop, the, we'll drop 26 of them, and we'll pick up, uh, you know, 14 of them. Okay, great. We'll split the baby in half. Okay, it's dinner time. I got to get out of here. And Jack Smith knows this because he's, he's a slime ball. Now, my guests, my two great guests on Sunday include former Virginia Republican Governor Bob McDonnell. It's an exclusive interview, and we're going to talk about Jack Smith. We're going to talk about his henchmen, although Bob McDonnell doesn't know this yet because I haven't conducted the interview, but it's just logical. Um, How they tried to pressure his wife or threatened his wife for testimony against her husband. How they went around and got attorney-client privilege information. All the same, all the same rotten Stalinist tactics. Took the Supreme Court to finally step in. But you have a lot of people who are hostile to Trump on that Supreme Court, including people he appointed, like Brett Kavanaugh. Or Barrett, including John Roberts, who listens to some of these fools, like Mike Ludick, who's lost his mind, in my view. Former federal judge, former friend, I, I have nothing to do with that guy. Lost it, in my view, completely. Geez, I can remember picking up the phone. The irony of this one, Mr. Producer. Calling, I think it was Trump, and saying, Ludick, pick Ludick. Thank God he didn't. Thank God he didn't. So here's Ryan Nobles, NBC News Capitol Hill correspondent, saying exactly what I know they're all going to say. Now, now it's important to keep in mind, while Republicans believe that there is a tie between Hunter's business dealings, the president himself, they have yet to prove any hard evidence, provide any, that the president himself has done anything wrong. Well, he's a co-conspirator. <coughs> We have to learn to use their tactics against them, and it's a perfectly legitimate tactic. He greased the skids for his son. That's what he did. That's what happens when you're selling your name and selling your office. People keep saying, well, where's the money? You didn't get the money. You didn't get the money. Okay, fine. He helped the son to get money. What do you mean by that? No, I don't mean anything by it. We have witnesses. We have whistleblowers. We've got hard evidence, texts and emails. We have a laptop. Got a whole lot to demonstrate that. We have flight records. All kinds of stuff. All kinds of stuff. I'll be right back. Mark Lovin.
You know a company is looking for you when they actually upgrade your service and don't charge you for it? This is great news and for new and current Pure Talk customers. Pure Talk just added data to every plan and is including a mobile hotspot with each one with no price increase whatsoever. Now, if you've considered Pure Talk before but haven't pulled the trigger, take a look again. Just $20 a month for unlimited talk text and a 50% more 5G data plus mobile hotspot. Just 20 bucks a month, folks. This is why I love Pure Talk that also happens to be veteran-owned and only hires the best customer service team right here in America. Most families are saving almost $1,000 a year while enjoying the most dependable 5G network in America. Just go to puretalk.com and enter promo code Levin Podcast to make the switch to Pure Talk and you'll save an additional 50% off your first month. Again, go to puretalk.com, enter promo code L-E-V-I-N Podcast. And make the switch to my cell phone company, Pure Talk, today. Here's Claire McCaskill. She's sort of the female version of uh, Chris Christie, if you get my drift, Mr. Producer. And she used to pretend to be a moderate Democrat from the show-me state. And uh, she showed a little too much, and they voted her out. Uh, Josh Hawley kicked her ass, thankfully. And so now she's an MSNBC grifter. Cut seven, go. Well, they're going to keep doing what they've been doing. Um, they are going to try to indict a father for loving his son. Who See is how gonna... stupid she is? They're not going to indict Biden. Ever. Ever. People need to get that through their heads. He won't even appoint a special counsel, plus, as I said... Republican and Democrat administrations have consistently said over the last half century that you cannot indict a sitting president. It was first looked into with Richard Nixon and then subsequent presidents. That's number one. So they're trying to indict a father for his loving son. Do these people know how stupid they sound? I understand Jeffrey Dahmer's mother loved the hell out of him, Mr. Benucci. I do. I, I do. Now, I want you to think about how they have treated the, the Trump children and how they would have laughed and mocked such a ridiculous comment. And how do we know Joe Biden loves his son? How has how he demonstrated it to anybody? Does anybody know? How has he demonstrated his love for his son when he can't even demonstrate his love for his granddaughter in Arkansas? His love for his son. How so? Is there any evidence that he intervened in his drug activities? Is there any evidence that he intervened when he was, you know, dating his deceased son's wife and then dated? Oh, it's so gross. I don't even know all the things this guy did. Did he intervene then? No, he actually said he thought it was pretty nice when he started dating his deceased son's wife. He was asked about it. He approved of it. And, of course, there's Tara Reid. Tara Reid fled to Russia, for God's sakes. That poor girl fled to Russia. You could see she was stressed. She gained an enormous amount of weight. Nobody would listen to her. Nobody believed her. She was humiliated. She went public. She fled the country, for God's sakes. Unbelievable. I guess George Conway couldn't advise her and help her, right? Studies. He's, he's gotten increasingly repulsive, that guy. Absolutely repulsive to me. And an intellectual fraud. Sorry, just the way it is. So there's Claire McCaskill. <clears throat> then we have somebody named David Chalian, CNN political director. I want you to hear how they sound. They all sound like Democrat operatives. Cut eight, go. The fact that um, if indeed the result out of court today is there's clear understanding on both sides that there is ongoing investigation into Hunter Biden, that fits beautifully into the Republican frame. So it's the understand. fault of the Republicans now, somehow. Do you really have to be as dumb as this dumbass to get a political director job at CNN? The Republicans had nothing to do with Hunter Biden's schemes and conduct. They had nothing to do with the investigation of Hunter Biden. 
All they were said Trump. I said they had nothing to do with it. It's talking about Congress, right? They cut the sweetheart deal. This judge in Wilmington, who thankfully isn't part of the D.C. crowd, she says, wait a minute, this isn't kosher. And so it helps the Republicans, you see. That's how they see stuff. Kill the Republicans. Long live the Democrats. Go ahead. You noted Kevin McCarthy, the speaker, talking, the, laying the groundwork for an impeachment inquiry, which goes back to these issues as well, because the whole... Shouldn't there impeach- be an impeachment inquiry? I mean, under the Nancy Pelosi standard, there should have been an impeachment inquiry even before Joe Biden became president, right, Mr. Producer? Oh, yes. Should be an impeachment inquiry when Joe Biden was on the Acela train heading to Washington, D.C. for the four billionth time. Before even announced. That's the way they worked it with Trump, I believe. So this is CNN, you see. Sick. Your constipated news network that has no rate. Apparently the staff at CNN seek solace from Rabbi Zucker, Mother Zucker. Who has a, uh, he's a nasty dude, that guy. Nasty dude. I think he used his face for a bulletin board when he was a kid, Mr. Producer. At least that's the way it looks to me. How does a creep like that get anywhere? He's got the intelligence of a uh, of a kumquat, right? He's got the look of a pineapple. There's no success whatsoever at CNN. He destroyed it. It's so bad nobody can figure out how to save it. And I would just say this: let it die. Put it in hospice. Be done with it. Tell CNN you're done. You can go. It's okay. Let go. You're done. Let go. I said let go. You can't, you can't come back. It's one way to save a carbon footprint rather than outlaw incandescent light bulbs. It's gross. More David Shellian seeing an ass through him. All right, we'll be right back. You know a company is looking for you when they actually upgrade your service and don't charge you for it? This is great news and for new and current Pure Talk customers. Pure Talk just added data to every plan and is including a mobile hotspot with each one with no price increase whatsoever. Now, if you've considered Pure Talk before but haven't pulled the trigger, take a look again. Just $20 a month for unlimited talk text and now 50% more 5G data plus mobile hotspot. Just 20 bucks a month, folks. This is why I love Pure Talk. It also happens to be veteran-owned and only hires the best customer service team right here in America. Most families are saving almost $1,000 a year while enjoying the most dependable 5G network in America. Just go to puretalk.com and enter promo code Levin Podcast to make the switch to Pure Talk and you'll save an additional 50% off your first month. Again, go to puretalk.com, enter promo code L-E-V-I-N Podcast and make the switch to my cell phone company, Pure Talk, today. Mark Levin, the cure for the common liberal. Talk to Mark now at 877-381-3811. As you know, Joe Biden is many things, and he's also apparently a meteorologist, a climatologist. Oh, yes, the man who could not pass law school without plagiarizing is a man of enormous wisdom and knowledge, and climate change is the key. It's the key. And here he is on a hot summer day. He knows it's climate change. Cut 16, go. I don't think anybody can deny the impact of climate change anymore. There used to be a lot of time when I first got You know, it's a here. funny thing uh, how, they, how they use weather to define climate change. Weather is not the same as climate change. And I love these moronic reporters going on the air and they're saying it's the hottest, what is it, uh, uh, July since recorded history. No, it's not. Since recorded history? I mean, since records have been kept. Whose records? What are you talking about? Go ahead. It's not a problem. Well, 
I don't know anybody. I shouldn't say that. I don't know anybody who honestly believes climate change is not a serious problem. So you see, if you don't agree with him, you're not honest. That's it's that simple. You're a denier. You're not honest. Probably a white supremacist. Go ahead. Just take a look at the historic floods in Vermont, California earlier this year. Now you Drops believe this? Her. You believe this, Grant? Go ahead. They're growing more frequent and intense. Wildfires spreading a smoky haze. Oh, uh, yeah, that's climate change, not uh, moronic Democrat rules. Go ahead. Miles worsening air quality. The record temperatures, and I mean record, are now affecting more than 100 million Americans. Okay, that's that. So who is responsible for all this, Mr. Producer? Who's responsible for this? Cut 17, go. And all my investing in America agenda, we provided a record $50 billion. You're not investing in America. You're investing in government. It's two different things, moron. Investing in America agenda. <laughs> go ahead. To restore wetlands, manage wild fires, yes. help Americans in every state withstand extreme heat. Whoa, but, whoa, whoa. He's helping us withstand extreme heat, Mr. Producer? I turn my air conditioning on. That's what helps me with heat. And if Biden had his way, I wouldn't have an air conditioner. My air conditioner wouldn't work. There'd be no electricity because most electricity is made from coal and natural gas and oil. So there'd be many more deaths if he had his way. Go ahead. MAGA extremist Congress are trying oh, to undo all... It's the MAGA ext- Mag extreme. I think his uh, his teeth are falling loose there. And it's the mag extremists in Congress. Go ahead. Not a single one of them. Not a single Republican voted voted for the Inflation Reduction Act. Wait a minute. It's all. called the Inflation Reduction Act. You mean it was about climate change? Oh, you're such a slime ball. It's not even funny. Malcolm Roberts. He's a senator from Queen, Queensland, Australia. Hat tip to Twitter. Now, who is this man? He has a PhD in biotechnology. He's a science journalist. CEO of Sunfluencer. He was banned from Twitter in 2021 by the bad guys. He was allowed back on Twitter by Elon Musk in 2022. Elon Musk, my personal hero. Let's listen to Malcolm Roberts. Cut 18, go. As an engineer educated in atmospheric gases, and as a business manager, I was responsible for hundreds of people's lives based on my knowledge of atmospheric gases. I listen to scientists, I cross-examine scientists, and I debate the science. I have never found anyone logical scientific points based on empirical scientific evidence that shows we have anything to worry about at all. And the basics of this, when you burn a hydrocarbon fuel, you burn molecules containing carbon and hydrogen. With oxygen, they form CO2, carbon dioxide, and H2O, water vapour. That's it. Carbon dioxide is essential for all life. But let's go beyond the science and have a look at natural experiment. We've had two natural experiments, global experiments, in the last 14 years. The first was in 2009, when the use of hydrocarbon fuels in the recession that followed the global financial crisis reduced. There was less carbon dioxide produced from, from human use of hydrocarbons. And what, did that, what happened to the level of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere? It kept increasing. And what happened in 2020, when we had a, a major recession, almost a depression around the world as, as a result of COVID restrictions placed by governments? We saw the same reduction in hydrocarbon fuel used by humans, the same cut in carbon dioxide output from humans, and yet carbon dioxide in the atmosphere continued increasing. And those who understand the science understand that it is fundamental. Humans cannot and do not affect the level of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. It's controlled by nature entirely. Nature entirely. You know, tomorrow what I want you to do, America, is put on your sunglasses and look up in the sky, Mr. Producer. What do you see up there? What's that big yellow shiny ball? It's the sun. The amount of energy in the sun is so massive, we can't even begin to describe it. If the sun hiccups, 
it affects the climate in the United States and on all the other planets in the solar system. We are nothing compared to the sun. We're a drop in the bucket. The sun is a power force that is indescribable, unimaginable. We're trucking around in our little combustion cars, combustion engine driven cars and outlawing light bulbs and changing dishwashers. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? And you got Biden and the other other MAGA extremists. They don't want to hear from scientists. They only want to hear from scientists who are bought and paid for by governments. They don't want to hear the real science. It's like a baby's not a baby when you have an abortion. Well, that's such a choice. That's a, come on now, that's a choice. That's not a baby. Mm-hmm. Or the science, like during COVID-19. Well, they had no idea what the science was. They still don't. But all that aside, you just heard Joe Biden mumble through a whole list of events that occur. Floods. Forest fires. Hurricanes. Heat. You know, thousands of years ago, people might look at the moon. They might look at the moon and things would happen here on Earth. Things that weren't particularly pleasant, God knows what. And they'd blame it. Not on the people doing it, they would talk about upsetting the moon gods. We must have upset the moon gods. So they'd sacrifice people, sacrifice animals. They change their lives. They do all kinds of weird stuff because it's the moon gods. They're very unhappy. No, it's just nature doing, no, 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 no. It's the moon gods. And you got to follow the science. It's not a science. It's an ideology. It's a false religion. It's not a science. You can't put five independent scientists in one room who can define to you what climate change is. So it's an ideology, and they're involved in brainwashing. Language, thinking processes. You're not allowed to think outside the box on anything. And they're destroying our economy, changing our our lifestyles in the name of climate change. So they have to keep it up. It's a false idol. So there's Biden, who knows nothing about everything. And everything about nothing. Same with Kerry, John Kerry. These are politicians. They weren't talking about this 40 years ago. Talking about it now, because it's finally what they settled on. This is how we take America over. This is how we destroy it. Climate change. Every time it's hot, every time it's cold... Every time there's a flood, every time there's an earthquake, every time there's a hurricane, it's worse than ever before. Ever, 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 ever before. Well, as George Carlin would say, tell that to the people who used to be at Pompeii. Right? We have nothing to do with this. Nothing. We couldn't affect the climate if we wanted to. There is nothing we can do about the sun nothing or any of these other natural occurrences the idea the hubris the sanctimony that they'll use a few cherry picked scientists like they used to you know like the monarchs used to seven eight hundred years ago that they'll use these cherry picked scientists and they'll tell them so called scientists what they want to hear and most of them are on government payroll or some kind of grant or whatever They're destroying our lives. And so this gives them the authority to outlaw the incandescent light bulb? Why? Is it killing somebody? A light bulb? A washing machine? A dishwasher? Gotta use less water. Gotta use less water when you flush the toilet, when you shower. Why? 
I just thought Vermont was loaded with floods, Mr. Producer. Or anything else they want to do. These are little creepy steps, and they're going to get bigger and bigger. How many cars you can have, what kind of cars you can have, cars that have to be approved by the EPA before they can be manufactured, monitoring how far you drive, where you drive, as there'll be shortages of electricity, brownouts and blackouts. You can drive on these days and not on those days, and you can only drive so far. Not only that, for the well-being of the air, the water, and human life, we cannot have these big homes anymore where the rich live in single-family homes and the poor live in apartment buildings. People must now change the way they zone in these communities for densely packed areas, public transportation. We're now going to have social credits that are handed out to each household and each family to see how they're doing. We only get it from public utilities. You use this much energy this month as opposed to last month. See those, Mr. Producer? You've been a bad boy. I mean, a bad boy girl. I mean, a bad, well, whatever we call them. Yes. This is just the tip of the iceberg. It is going to be horrendous. And what I fear is 65 years old, I'll probably be dead and gone while all this is going on. What about the kids and the grandkids? What kind of country is this going to be? And notice there's only one political party pushing this. Don't get me wrong. There are aberrants everywhere. But as a force, as, a, as, as an aggregate, it's all the Democrat Party control. We want to control where you live, how you live, what your lifestyle is. We want to control everything in your house, how you wash your clothes, the amount of water you're going to have to flush the toilet, to shower. We're going to affect your lifestyle. Hey, stay out of the bedroom. We are. We're in every other room in your house. And not only your house, the automobiles, how far you can drive, where you can drive. Oh, look at this. The electrical grid, all of a sudden, it can't handle all this. I'll be right back. Mark Lovin. You know what company is looking for you when they actually upgrade your service and don't charge you for it? This is great news and for new and current Pure Talk customers. Pure Talk just added data to every plan and is including a mobile hotspot with each one with no price increase whatsoever. Now, if you've considered Pure Talk before but haven't pulled the trigger, take a look again. Just $20 a month for unlimited talk text and now 50% more 5G data plus mobile hotspot. Just 20 bucks a month, folks. This is why I love Pure Talk. That also happens to be veteran-owned and only hires the best customer service team right here in America. Most families are saving almost $1,000 a year while enjoying the most dependable 5G network in America. Just go to puretalk.com and enter promo code Levin Podcast to make the switch to Pure Talk, and you'll save an additional 50% off your first month. Again, go to puretalk.com, enter promo code L-E-V-I-N Podcast. Make the switch to my cell phone company, Pure Talk, today. So Hillary Clinton deletes tens of thousands of emails that had been subpoenaed by the House Oversight Committee chaired by Jason Chabitz. And they say to the Department of Justice, this is obstruction. Well, we don't. We don't charge in cases like this, Mr. Chavitz. What's wrong with you? Former Secretary of State. We don't charge in cases like this. And now Donald Trump. Just piling on. I think it's 40 charges now. They go after a maintenance guy. Charging him. He, that guy can't even afford a lawyer, for God's sakes. And this is what you do. You know, you're putting pressure on. If he turns state's witness, we'll be okay with this, pal. Come on now. You know who we're going after. You know who it is. I've been telling you about this movie, Sound of Freedom. I've been uh, posting about it. That I saw it on Tuesday night with my wife. And a number of uh, individuals on Capitol Hill in the Cannon office building. Well, the individual who this story is about, as well as the individuals he saved and the individuals he couldn't save, is Tim Ballard, former U.S. government agent 
quit his job in order to devote his life to rescuing children from global sex trafficking. He will be with us in the next hour. This is very, very important. We'll be right back. He's here. He's here. Now, broadcasting from the underground command post, deep in the bowels of a hidden bunker, somewhere under the brick and steel of a nondescript building, we've once again made contact with our leader, Mark Levin. Hello, America. Mark Levin here. Our number, 877-381-3811. Two book signings to announce. We're only going to be doing three. Maybe we'll add one later, but that's about it. Certainly going to do one at the Reagan Library. Please don't contact them yet. We're still working on a date and time, but we will let you know and when we know, and we'll announce it because that sells out literally within minutes. But here we go. Saturday, September 23rd, 10 a.m. at Bookends in Ridgewood, New Jersey. We do them every... Well, we couldn't do any book signing two years ago, so we're going to do them again, but not many. In fact, very few. Bookends in New Jersey, Ridgewood, New Jersey... It's a fantastic independent bookstore. And let me say this to you. If you live in New Jersey, New York, Connecticut, Pennsylvania, areas, Delaware, we'd love to see you. Or anywhere in the country. We have a wonderful time. Mr. Producer's there. My wife's there. Others are there. I have other family members from time to time. So that's bookend Saturday, the 23rd, 10 a.m. I hope you'll check it out. Now, the next day, Sunday, September 24th at 1 p.m., Barnes & Noble, Tyson's Corner Center, McLean, Virginia. We use that Barnes & Noble all the time. Easy access right there in the mall. It is huge. And we have a hell of a fun time there, too. So that's Sunday, September 24th, 1 to 5 or until people stop coming. That's Barnes & Noble, McLean, Virginia. Anybody who's been to one of our book signings will tell you it is fantastic. You're there with fellow patriots. You're treated with the respect and so forth and so on. So that's Bookends, Ridgewood, New Jersey, Saturday, September 23rd at 10 a.m. And then that's Barnes & Noble, Sunday, September 24th at 1 p.m., Tyson's Corner Center. That's the Tyson's Mall in McLean, Virginia. You can find all this on MarkLevinShow.com, our website there, and it's, we'll be doing the Reagan Library in October, more likely earlier than later, and we will announce it as soon as I know. We're going to have Tim Ballard on the program, very important, Sound of Freedom. This movie was literally done in 2015, but they couldn't get Disney to, to uh, market it, they couldn't get... 20th Century Fox, I guess, which is now 21st Century Fox to do it. And so a fantastic, small, independent Angel Productions did it. 2015, it took all this time to get it out. And it is a movie, you never hear me talk about movies, ever. It's a movie I want to strongly encourage you to see, and we'll talk about that as well. Now, there was a hearing today on the mutilation of children. And the Democrats attacked the fact of the hearing, and many of them walked out of the committee. I just want you parents to know about this. They don't care about parent notification. They don't care about the surgical mutilation of children. They don't care. Here's Chloe Cole, a detransitioner. She was a tomboy. In other words, a young girl that liked, you know, doing physical things in sports and so forth. So she was mutilated. And now she wants to come back to being a woman and she's trying. And the poor thing testified that now she's, she's a monster. 
I read about this in my book, too. There's everything in this book. It's like the dictionary of how the Democrat Party hates America. There really is almost a an all-inclusive book. Here she is. Cut 10. Go. So what message do I want to bring to American teenagers and their families? I didn't need to be lied to. I needed compassion. I needed to be loved. I needed to be given therapy to help me work through my issues, not affirm to my delusion that by transforming into a boy, it would solve all my problems. We need to stop telling 12-year-olds that they're born wrong, that they are right to reject their own bodies and feel uncomfortable with their own skin. We need to stop telling children that puberty is an option, that they can choose what kind of puberty they will go through, just so they can choose what clothes to wear or what music to listen to. Puberty is a rite of passage to adulthood, not a disease to be mitigated. As I said, most of the Democrats walked out. They didn't even hear a testimony. You can believe what kind of scum get elected under the Democrat banner. Cut 11, go. Today, I should be at home with my family celebrating my 19th birthday. And instead, I'm making a desperate plea to my elected, rep- my elected representatives learn the lessons from other medical scandals like the opioid crisis to recognize that doctors are human too and sometimes they are wrong. My childhood was ruined along with thousands of detransitioners that I know through our networks. This needs to stop. You alone can stop it. Enough children have already been victimized by this barbaric pseudoscience. Please let me be your final warning. God. The hell have we become? What in the world is going on in this country? You won't find the Republican Party supporting this. Certainly not conservatives. It's one party that backs this. Here's Jerry Nadler, his witness. Unbelievable. Legal director, NCLR, Democrat witness at the hearing on gender affirming care for minors. Cut 12, go. What are the benefits of receiving gender affirming care? They're enormous. They, they produce positive mental health outcomes for these young people. They dramatically improve, improve their quality of life. They do better in school. They develop positive social relationships. We heard that with Ms. Reynolds' testimony. Their relationships with their family improve. Okay, I have tons of evidence that this is false, 100% false. 100% false. Obviously, you can pick examples here and there. But it's 100% false. That's in the book, too. Representative Wesley Hunter here on the hearing today. Cut 13, go. If my children had their way, they would have ice cream for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and for every single meal in between. Oh, the wisdom of children. But in a sane country, we know that children are mature enough to make adult decisions that will impact the rest of their lives. That's why we have parents. Children cry for ice cream, but as parents, we have the wisdom to know that ice cream is not in their best interest, particularly their long-term interest. Cut 14, go. Ms. Scanlon, my daughters are going to watch this because you have become their new hero, and I can assure you that my four-year-old and my two-year-old daughters will not change in front of biological men. This is ridiculous. I don't care what party you are a part of. If you think that we're all equal and the same biologically, you've literally lost your mind. And when my two daughters work hard in the sport, work hard in their craft to be the best that they can be amongst other women, they will compete against the other women. I owe Victoria and Olivia and every other young lady in this country that. If you think I'm wrong, I am not the problem. I can assure you. We have an opportunity in this country to get this right in 2024 so we can stop all of this foolishness. Mm -hmm. But he says, I cannot thank you ladies enough for bringing this up. I apologize that we live in America where this is happening. It's our buddy Wesley Hunt comes on the program from time to time. We'll be right back. Mark Levin.
You know, I'm very... Well, I'm very pleased to do this interview. It's something I've been waiting for. Uh, with the movie out, The Sound of Freedom, it's very important that as many of you as possible see it. Tim Ballard is the man that made this movie possible with his whole team. He's a former U.S. government agent with DHS. He uh, he quit his job to devote his life to rescuing children from uh, global sex traffickers. The movie is absolutely heart-wrenching, absolutely heart-wrenching what's taking place. And the fact that we we're really only talking about, in the case of the movie, 50, 100 kids or so forth, this is happening by the thousands. So I'm going to shut up. Tim Ballard, how are you, my friend? Doing great. Thanks so much for having me on, Mark. Tim, tell, tell America a little bit about yourself and what you are now committed to really for the rest of your life and why you're committed to it. So, as you said, I spent 12 years as a special agent, undercover operator with U.S. government, uh, working cases, primarily cases of child crimes and, and sex abuse and child trafficking. And then in 2013, I was working a couple of cases, and uh, they, they called me off the case. One, one in particular was in Colombia, and that's depicted in the film Sound of Freedom. And I, we quit, you know, we, we quit and decided to stay to finish the case. And... Uh, um, it was successful, as you see in the film, and, and then from there we were able to continue to grow into, into multiple organizations. And today um, I work with dozens of organizations, consulting, fundraising, and doing rescue operations all, all throughout the world, supporting law enforcement and aftercare services around the world. Well, let's get into some substance to this. Um, how many children are we aware of? And many of them are not even children, they're babies, are kidnapped one way or another and sold into sex slavery. Do we know about how many a day? Can we even imagine? Well, the, the numbers we have from U.S. State Department, Department of Labor, that the total number of slaves at 27 million and about 6 million of those are children either in slave labor, organ harvesting, um, and 2 to 3 million are estimated to be children in the commercial sex trade. Uh, in the United States, we, we being that we're the number one consumer of child sex material, what we used to call child pornography, uh, makes us um, a target country, a, a country of interest. We're, we're, all, we're also in the top three for destination countries. So, you know, when we have 85,000 unaccompanied minors, thousands of them under five years old, lost into the belly of the United States, that makes that's a very concerning uh, situation, obviously. Yeah, it is very concerning. And... Uh... Honestly, and I'm not trying to drag you into my world, I don't hear this administration talking about it. I don't hear DHS talking about it. You worked for which department? Homeland Security, the investigative unit, H and Homeland you, Security Investigations. And you had to leave because they were trying to pull you back at this point, right? Right. The uh, jurisdictional limitations, just bureaucracy, and and yeah, they, they, they pulled me back. <laughs> Does it help? When we talk about child sex slavery, um, when the border is not secure, or does or does that increase the problem? Oh, I mean, a secure border is the only compassionate policy. You know, the, I, I, w I would say what Donald Trump did and others. And, and what's so funny is Clinton built more of the wall than Trump did. So it's never been political until Trump touched it. Then it became political to everybody. And they're trying to say it was, it was a bad thing. But when you build walls and when you enforce border policy, you give a child their last hope because it forces the trafficker to take that child into a port of entry where trained women and men in uniform can identify and rescue, as you saw happen in, in the film, which is a true story. Um, and so really it's two plus two equals four, but this, this administration wants to play with that math and act like there's something wrong with border enforcement, something not compassionate about it, when in fact it's the only compassionate thing. These children want to be rescued, and they know their last hope is if a wall will direct their captors to take them to a place where they can be rescued. It's that simple. So really it's devastating what, 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 what this administration has done um, in terms of, of politicizing and, and not enforcing our, our, our southern border. The, uh, the open border allows these sex traffickers to work between the two countries and between multiple countries. And you say we're the number one, this country, consumer of child, what do we call it, child 
sex or whatever we call it. Sex material, and- child sex, child rape video, child sex material. Yeah, we we consume more than than anyone else in that area. So we have we have the demand. We have the pedophiles congregated here in in numbers like like you have you don't see it anywhere else. I, I I just can't believe that we don't have a concentrated effort. You know, it's sort of divided into departments, so, but it's not talked about in the halls of Congress much. Uh, Speaker McCarthy spoke about it at some length today during his press event because he was at this event. It was his event where the movie was shown. He wants to do more about it. But I don't know if, if I were president of the United States or attorney general of the United States or director of Homeland Security and I saw this, I'd have a meeting the next day with my people. and say, OK, what are we going to do about this? We got to do a lot more than we're doing. It's on the increase, is it not? It's it's on the increase like we've never seen. And I watched a and I watched a what, what came across as almost an interrogation with in, in the Senate Judiciary Committee between Secretary Mayorkas and and Ted Cruz. And and Senator Cruz brought out these bracelets and he said, "Do you recognize these bracelets? These 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 child trafficking networks in Mexico are making upwards of fourteen million dollars a day, according to the New York Post. And I, I believe those numbers. And they put little like wristbands around these kids to keep their trafficking of them organized. And Ted Cruz showed Mayorkas the wristbands and he said, and he says, "Do you recognize these?" And he says, "I've never seen those before." And I, it blew my. I talked to Ted Cruz later and he said that blew his mind. He thought he was at least going to admit that he knew that these kids were being branded this way. And actually it was an organized trafficking scheme. Uh, and he said, I, he said, no, I don't know. And he didn't seem to care. I mean, the, the exchange is quite astonishing. Um, they want people in this country. They want to open the borders. And I guess they don't care that children are clearly getting hurt in the process. How young are some of these kids? Sorry, what was that, how, Mark? How young are some of these kids? Oh, the, I, if you look at the CBP data, um, thousands of them are under five years old. So you have two-year-olds, three-year-olds. It sounds bizarre, but it's, it's just the truth. Showing up unaccompanied. And, and people wonder, well, how do you think that three-year-old got there? You think, you think he walked there? She walked there? No. Mm-hmm. The traffickers take them from Central America, put them in a place where the where CBP officers have to bring them in. They immediately go to HHS. Now, these kids will have, I've been there, I've seen this. These kids have like a little piece of paper, either bobby pinned to their shirt or in their pocket. And it has a name and a phone number of the sponsor. HHS, by policy, has to call the number. And the sponsor says, yes, hello, I'm George Smith. Oh, yes, little Jose Gonzalez. Yes, I, I'm taking that child. Zero vetting, zero background checks. They used to have a rapid DNA technology that Biden just canceled about three months ago. And so these children are released to whatever sponsor picks them up. The sponsor doesn't even have to show they're a U.S. citizen. It's harder to adopt a cat from a shelter than it is to take a child out from HHS uh, custody. And now our taxpayer dollars will pay for the final leg of what will likely be a trafficking experience by putting that kid on a train, plane, or automobile, and your taxpayer dollars will pay for that kid to be delivered to the unvetted sponsor. It's, it's, it's devastating what's happening. Tim, I want to hold you over the break. I want to talk about the movie, where people can go see it, because I think it's uh, crucially important. Uh, it is a life-changing event. It certainly is. We'll be right back with Tim Ballard, who is the, really the hero, Sound of Freedom movie. I'll be right back. Mark Levin, the thunder on the right. Call in now, 877-381-3811. Tim Ballard, who is really the real-life figure in Sound of Freedom, which is a fantastic movie. It is uh, intriguing, it's compelling, it's as good as any movie you've ever seen. Production values are through the roof. And you had trouble getting a, uh, a major studio to, uh, to do the movie and market the movie, didn't you, Tim? Yeah, it was crazy. You have, you know, Fox, Fox started with it and Disney acquired it. And once they had it, it were very clear that they weren't going to do anything with it, which probably wasn't a surprise, but, but should have been. And I took Eduardo Verastegui, the, the, the main producer, wrestled it out of Disney's hands after a year and then took it everywhere. Turned down by Netflix, turned down by Amazon, turned down by everybody. And then finally Angel Studios 
saw it and said, are you kidding me? We, we, we'll grab this thing and go. And 90 days later, they launched. And it's, it's astonishing what, what happened after that. <laughs> now, if people want to see this movie, how do they find out where it's playing? So go to angel.com slash freedom, and it pops up. You put your area code in, and and uh, and and uh, there you go. You can uh, you can find out where 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 it is and what theaters it's playing in. All right, we will post that on my social sites. And um, is it still holding up okay in these uh, movie houses, or are they starting to pull it? No, it's it's doing the opposite. It's crazy. It's 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 supposed to go down the screens, but they're going up. Our third weekend was bigger than our first weekend. And our first weekend, we beat Indiana Jones. Uh, this last week, we 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 overtook Mission Impossible. So it's it's yeah, we're just all kind of dumbfounded watching it, and it's it's continuing to just go further. And there's going to be an international release into Latin America on August uh, 31st. So but we're now going worldwide. And the point of the movie is to make it clear to anybody who will dare to watch it what's going on. You know, it's interesting at the Cannon Building where we were, they had all kinds of food in the back. It was lovely. I, I was eating it before the movie. But during the course of the movie, I put everything down. You can't watch this and eat like it's some kind of, uh, you know, uh, Ken and Barbie movie. This is, uh, this is the real deal. And I, I'm just telling people out there, don't just go by yourself. Bring some family and friends. Uh, it's not because they need the money uh, to, for the movie, although that's always nice. But it's because we got to get the message out there. And um, you started this organization, the SpearFund.org. What is that? So the Spear Fund is it's, it's a fund that... that gathers resources and has experts on it to deploy to the groups and organizations that exist throughout the world. Over the last 10 years, several uh, private organizations, nonprofits, and, and other groups have popped up with expertise in this field. And so we find them, we provide the resources to them. So that way every child would get the best rescuer on the planet to get them out of the hell they're in. So it's kind of a very inclusive, almost capitalistic in nature, how we're running it, because if you're the best rescuer, you're going to get the funding and then you'll get our consulting and coaching as well as, as we go rescue these kids together. It's called the spear fund, the spear S P E A R fund.org. We will have it linked on all our social sites. So tell people out there a little bit about your movie. Give them a little bit of feel for what you went through and what you had to do. So it, it kind of it picks up when I'm in the U.S. government. I'm, I'm on the southern border, and um, I, I, I get permission because I beg my boss <laughs> if I can go to Colombia and, and only consult on a, on a case. And I, I overcommit, and I get really emotionally attached. Uh, and when they tell me to come home because I haven't proven my, myself or I don't have enough evidence or jurisdiction, I I call my wife and I say, well, what are we going to do? I can't come home. I know we're going to rescue these kids. And she, my wife says to me, as, as depicted in the film, quit your job. You know, and well, I was I was more cowardice than the film depicts because I said, that's not the right answer, Catherine. You're supposed to say, get home. We have six children and $3,000 in the bank. Uh, but she said to me instead, very, she's very, a, a person of great faith, and she said, I will not let you jeopardize my salvation by not doing this. That's what she said to me. Um, I, the, the filmmaker said they couldn't put that line in because it would take too long to rehabilitate me as, as a courageous person um, because those are the words I actually needed in real life to actually do this. And and then we, we go ahead and do it, and it's, it's a roller coaster right after that. And we end up finding um, those 54 children. Actually, in the end, it was over 100 that we rescued, but the film only uh, gets to 54. Um, and uh, it became the biggest rescue operation to date that we know of. And you go deep into the jungles to try and find this young girl, correct? Right. And, and uh, that is actually in a different location we have a website that explains because we have, we have to we have to still protect identity. So that's actually yes. a different location than what the film shows. But yes, uh, this this child labor camp where they're doing all sorts of horrific things, and we're actually still working in that camp, believe it or not. So that's why we have to be careful about where. So we won't go into detail. Yeah. Um, you actually got in a fight with the head of that group, or no? No that that was that was liberties taken. So. Uh, 
but you had your life on the yeah. line many times, didn't you? All they had to do is slit oh, many, your throat yeah. or shoot you in the, in the head. Yeah, that's that's. Uh, I've been in dozens of those situations. Um, you know, we don't we don't take guns in because if they see the gun, we're, they're going to they'll kill us immediately. So it's all about verbal judo and and acting the role. We we generally are wired up to we got to record the evidence. So it's it's pretty high risk. What what our teams uh, do throughout the world. Do many of these countries let you in? Are they glad to see you, or you have to go in? Or many people on. In, that have been in your position sort of uh, secretly? So we, we most, in the beginning, it was tough to get people back, back in 2014 when we really launched into this project. Uh, not today, though. We, we've proven ourselves. We've, re- we've rescued over 7,000 uh, women and children, God about 6,000 arrests. So at this point, the countries are actually begging us to come in, and we, we can't get there fast enough. Um, mm-hmm. And that's one reason I set up the Spear Fund so that we could we could respond more rapidly because we have a vast network of different operators, different operations groups, uh, because the demand is is so high. And this film has only increased that demand, which is great because as this film goes into these other countries, the people are are screaming for more response, and so we we want to be prepared to to assist. We want to help them, folks. Hope we can have a Levin surge and get to the SpearFund.org, whatever. You can donate to these folks. We'll go directly into trying to save these uh, these children who are in these horrific sex slave camps, sex slave situations. And some of these little kids, four, five, six, seven, eight years old, they're forced to endure rape four or five times a day, aren't they? Absolutely. That is that is the reality of the situation. Yeah. I mean, it's so unbelievable. It's it's so bad. That all these pedophiles are out there. I mean, who would have thought? Seriously. And and most of them, at least most of them who are getting these kids are in the United States. Do we know what states they're mostly in even? They're 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 pretty equally uh, you know spread across the, the country. Um, you know, it's there's been a five thousand percent increase in the, in these child rape uh, videos over the last eight years alone. Uh, you know, and, and one reason these foreign governments love to work with us is because we look like what the pedophiles look like. We are what the traffickers are trying to identify and, and service. So uh, that's, that's a sad commentary on our, on our country and our Western culture, but it's Westerners who are the ones who are traveling down, but now the cartels can make more money if they can get the kids to the pedophiles. And, and you know, courtesy of the United States of America, they're able to do that with these open borders. We have over 85,000 missing migrant children in this country, don't we? That's right. That's right. I was so and, encouraged, though, Mark, yeah. uh, at, when at, at during the screening, when they delivered to Eduardo Verastegui with the help of the Heritage Foundation, you saw they delivered a, a bill proposal to go after those kids, to go find those 85,000 kids. So that was one of the most encouraging uh, fruits I've seen from Sound of Freedom, because I would love to see this happen, and I'd love to be part of finding these 85,000 children. But isn't it amazing to you, Tim Ballard of Sound of Freedom, isn't it amazing to you that you could have tens of thousands of these migrant children? You know, they they used to say, oh, look, they're in cages. The goal was to try and determine whose kids they are. You can't just give them to adults because they can be these sex traffickers who have papers and so forth. Yeah. Yeah, the kids in cages thing was insane. Those are the lucky ones, and they're not cages, by the way. They're they're not. No. It's, you know, it's, that's not the Four Seasons, but I mean, the kids are being protected there while we try to find their families, and that, that's what the President Trump was trying to do. And and said he's accused of putting kids in cages, and it's like, well, the alternative to the institutions that they're in uh, is to be released to whatever pedophile comes to pick them up. It's it's really astonishing. Hmm. Well, thank you again. Go to the spearfund.org. See if you can help them out, folks. It's .org, so it's tax deductible. I know that much. The spearfund.org, the spearfund.org. And we will have uh, that link as well as a link that where you can put in your uh, your your zip code and you can find out where the movie is near you. And Tim Ballard, uh, we're going to have you back in a few months to see if anything's been moving anywhere. We appreciate you, buddy. We're- Thank you so much. Great to meet you last night. Thanks so much for helping us out. You too. God bless you. I can thank my wife for that. She's the one who said, we need to go and go, we did. I'll be right back. 
Mark Lovin. I want to make a public statement to President Trump's lawyers. I don't know them. And I'm going to post it, too, on True Social now, sir. I'm publicly encouraging President Trump's lawyers to file at least one of the most devastating motions they have. And there are several. But just pick one, maybe two. And they have several. In the documents case, it's time to launch a torpedo into the side of this pirate ship and try and bring this to a close quickly, perhaps even this year. You agree with that, Mr. Reducer? They have many, many motions. I went over it on TV at some length. And they need to do this. So, uh, and I want to encourage you folks, if you can, as soon as the program's over, head over to Amazon.com. And please go ahead and pre-order your copies of uh, The Democrat Party Hates America. I've been trying to get it to the top of the list of Amazon to get the discount down, the bigger the... The pre-orders, the better the discount. But I've also been trying to get it there to draw attention to the enemy, which is the Democrat Party. It encompasses all these elements of evil throughout our society. It really does. It really does. It is a party that is anti-American, that hates you, that hates our freedom, that hates our economic system. And they are now just taking a wrecking ball to this country. I don't care if it's appliances in your home, your automobile, safety in your community, your job, the value of your money. It's endless, and it's them. Get your copy of The Democrat Party Hates America. I want to be able to jump in with both feet with you. If, and uh, it's almost time. We're almost there. It's almost September. Now, when the uh, media and the legal analysts start talking about these new charges against Trump and so forth, not one of them will mention the motions that I have, like I did on Fox, I guess it was two weeks ago, and the fact that they ought to be fired, filed now. And watch, when they file them, say, as we've been saying, as many of us have been saying, no, as I have been saying, let's get to work here. Let's go, boys. Let's get it done. I know you can We're going to have a great show Sunday with former Republican Virginia Governor Bob McDonald. We're going to have the Prime Minister of Israel, Benjamin Netanyahu, who's going to tell us straight what's going on. Not not these typical media questions. Why are there so many people in the streets? I think we know why. We're experiencing it in our own country. And please, folks, go to Amazon.com, order your copy of The Democrat Party Hates America. It's right there, 40% off for you to take. And I want to thank all of you, all you great heroes there. I have the best listeners in the world, and that's you. I'll see you tomorrow. God bless.